Increasing or Decreasing Recipe Yields, Part 2. In the previous video, we said that a yield is the number of servings that a recipe makes. When our recipe makes more or less than we actually need, then we have to increase or decrease the yield. In the last video, we increase the yield. And so this time we're going to decrease because it's a little bit trickier. So we use the same formula, desired yield divided by original yield equals the conversion factor. And if you can't remember that, remember DOC. Desired yield, original yield equals the conversion factor. All right? So this time our example, our recipe serves eight and we need to serve four. So our desired yield, this is what we want to, to make. So this time we want to make four. We need to serve four. So our desired yield this time is four. And our original yield is eight. So this time we're saying four divided by eight. And four divided by eight is going to be a fraction. And if you put that into the calculator, you're going to get the decimal point five. So that's a little trickier. Now, the second step is that we multiply each ingredient by the conversion factor. So for our recipe here, I have put in 0.5 as our conversion factor. And this time we still have the same amounts we had last time, but our conversion factor is different. So our two pounds times, times 0.5 is going to, when you put that into your calculator, you're going to get one pound. And basically, when we multiply by 0.5, we're basically cutting our recipe in half. So one pound times 0.5 is going to be 0.5 pounds, and two teaspoons times 0.5 is going to be one teaspoon, okay? Our third step, and I'm gonna stay on this page for just a second, even though uh, our third step isn't written up here, but our third step is to make them into logical, measurable amounts. And if we look here, 0.5 pounds, the only thing we need to do is to, to make that logical and measurable is maybe um, translate our decimal into a fraction and we know that a common the common decimal point five translates to one half so this would be one half of a pound okay all right so like i just said we're going to convert answers to our logical measurable amounts that's step three so again, we need to think about what equipment that we need to use to measure. So I've got a different example up here. Our salt, if we need to use one, if our original recipe called for one tablespoon of salt and um, our conversion factor was 0.5, that would make our new amount would be um, a half or 0.5 one times 0 0.5 is 0 0.5 of a tablespoon, which we have already said, we could say the same thing, it's equal to um, one half, um, one half of a tablespoon. And But we know our measuring spoons, the equipment that we have to use, we have a one tablespoon, we have a one teaspoon, we have a half a teaspoon, and we have a fourth of a teaspoon. We do not have a half of a tablespoon, okay? So here's a little um, equation we can do to figure this out. If we, if we look at this like an algebra problem, we could say that, um, that our tablespoon 
uh, if we put that in parentheses here and we're going to multiply our 0.5 times our tablespoon, we know that, remember, three teaspoons equal a tablespoon, so we could change our tablespoon into three teaspoons. So we could say 0.5 times three teaspoons. So 0.5 times three teaspoons comes out to 1.5 teaspoons. And again, 0.5 is the same as one half. So we've got one and a half teaspoons. And we can measure, we've got a one teaspoon, so we could measure this part, and we've got a half a teaspoon. So we could measure 1.5 teaspoons. So that's the amount we need on our recipe instead of a half a tablespoon or 0.5 tablespoons. And if you need a picture to look at that, we know that one tablespoon is equal to three teaspoons. So it'll be just like we, we divided this in half by having one and a half tablespoons up here. I mean one and a half teaspoons and one and a half teaspoons down here. So we divided, and if we divided this tablespoon in half, it would be the same thing. So we have one and a half and one and a half because we started with three. All right. All right, so one more time to do our um, formula for increasing or decreasing a recipe. Desired yield divided by original yield equals conversion factor. DOC. DOC. Okay. All right, so the second thing we're going to do is take our conversion factor and multiply each ingredient in the recipe to make the new recipe amount. And then we convert it to a logical measurable amount. So we're going to try it here. We've got we, our recipe yield is 12 dozen, but we only need three dozen. Okay. So again, we're going to start with our desired yield, D, which is three. That's what we want. And our original yield is 12. Okay, three divided by 12 gives us 0.25. And you can put that in your calculator. Three divided by 12 equals 0.25. Two five. So our conversion factor is 0.25, right? So step two, let's, let's multiply each ingredient in our recipe by 0.25. So we've got to say three cups times 0.25, you can do this with your calculator, equals 0.75, okay? Now to go ahead to step three as we go along, can we, do we have a 0.75 measuring cup. We do not. So in order to measure our flour, we need to translate that to a fraction. So that's going to equal three-fourths of a cup. And we know how to measure three-fourths of a cup. Okay? So that's our common um, decimal. All right. For sugar, we're going to multiply our one cup of sugar. One times 0.25 is 0.25. And that's another common decimal. So we'll get one-fourth of a cup. Okay. Brown sugar, we've got three-fourths of a cup times 0.25. And this one gets to be a little trickier because we come out with 0.1875. Okay. So we've got to do something a little tricky with that. Okay. It's um, almost easier for us if we know, if we take this and multiply it as fractions. Because we know we can't do anything with point. 1875. We don't have any kind of tool to measure that. So we've got to make it a logical amount. So if we take our three fourths and we multiply it and we say, okay, this two five is the same thing as one fourth. And we just multiply our fractions. Three times one is three, and four times four is 16. So we end up with three sixteenths. Well, 16 should ring a bell to you because when we're talking about cups, what do we know there are 16 of in a cup? Well, let's see. Remember, these are our equivalents. We always, always got to remember that there's 16 tablespoons is equal to one cup. 
So if we've got three sixteenths and we know that one sixteenth is a tablespoon, then we know that three sixteenths is going to be three tablespoons. Okay? So we've got to kind of figure that out. That's that's part of the changing it to a logical measurable amount. We can measure three tablespoons. All right. Here's another tricky one. One egg times 0.25. Okay, how do you use 0.25 of an egg or a fourth of an egg? Well, we can just, for our recipe for eggs, usually we can go ahead and just use a whole egg. Um, for this particular recipe, that would work. Um, sometimes we would want to weigh the eggs and, um, and divide the weight. So it would, um, we would be able to use one-fourth of an egg that way. All right, butter, um, one cup times 0.25. Again, it's going to be 0.25 of a cup. And I can see right now I did not put in my, um, this should say each, even though I've got it over here. And this should, be, should say cups and this should say teaspoons. I left off my units and remember we said before you always have to make sure you include your units because even here where we where we change units. So all right so one cup times 0.25 is 0.25 of a cup of butter and we know that um, 0.25 is the same as one fourth so we're going to use one fourth of a cup and we know that one fourth of a cup is equal to four tablespoons in, in butter. We would want a half a stick or we would count out four tablespoons. All right, and so our baking powder, two teaspoons times 0.25 equals, and put that into your calculator, you're gonna get 0.5 teaspoons, which is our common um, decimal, which is 0.5 is equal to one half teaspoons and we have a half teaspoon measurement. So we can, these uh, measurements over here, we can measure each one of these easily, whereas these over here would have been a struggle for us if our recipe had had those numbers on it. So this was the um, last step of changing them to logical measurable amounts. It seems a little bit tricky, but you'll get the hang of it.